Good evening, friends. We have a very interesting personality amongst us tonight. Tony, how is it uh, being a brand in the industry that you run? Because as entrepreneurs, we are all brand ambassadors for our business. But in true terms, you are a brand in the line of activity that you do. And you shuttle between California, Dubai, and rest of the world, including India. Um, him uh, over the last couple of days. And uh, I, I found out that this whole thing is uh, for uh, as a social service uh, for uh, inspiring young people, and and I think it's a, a commendable job that you're doing. I, I, I commend you for that. Thank you, thank <laughs> you, Tony. That's so nice of you. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, the question you asked me: How does how do you do it um, uh, between LA and Dubai? And uh, I guess you know when you are passionate about what you do, and uh, when you enjoy what you do. It's uh, never um, a burden. It's not a work, just like you. Uh, you work 24 hours a day. Um, I work 23 hours a day because I'm a little bit older than you. I need one hour sleep. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, I don't get tired. I enjoy. I actually get great sleep in the airplane. Uh, 16 hours flight between Dubai and LA. So I get to uh, sleep. It's like a cradle, you know, when you're a little kid. So the plane moves like that and you sleep like a baby. Actually, that's the only time I get like 10 hours sleep in a stretch. So do you interview the client before you start with the assignment on what he wants, what are his needs, whether you could reach them, whether you could match them? So what do you do exactly? Do you interview the client in the beginning? Well, it depends on what kind of project it is. If it is a home, uh, which I used to do a lot of homes before. If it's a home, then you, uh, I ask people to... Uh, describe their home. I don't like to tell them that I want five bedrooms, four bathrooms. And I'll, I tell them to describe your home. Describe by, by that I mean uh, visualize it for me as you walk into the front door. What do you see? Do you see a two double height lobby with four staircases going? Or do you see a, a corridor that goes straight? Do you see, well, what do you see? So explain to me. A lot of times people would write, so, and then I, that gives me a, a window inside their brain. I understand exactly what they want, and that's how it comes. But when it comes to development projects like a building, there's generally a design brief that's already prepared by the developer through their feasibility studies and everything, so they exactly know what they want. They want uh, one bedroom that is 500 square feet, cannot be 510, because their numbers don't work that way, or cannot be 480. So you can have corridors cannot be more than 12% of your total area. So all these things are given to us as a design brief. So we take the design brief, and then we create uh, the project or create the concept. The objective of inspiring conversations is we want to learn how you do your business efficiently so that we can get tips on how we can improve our businesses. Business is all about people management. How do you manage your team? Because after meeting the client, you might just catch a few lines and then off it goes to your team. So how do you ensure that your team which has been selected performs the way the client wants and you have, envis you have envisioned? How do you do that? It's very simple. I tell them I'm God <laughs> and you do exactly what I tell you to do. <laughs> No, uh, you, uh, you know, it's a team effort, you know, anything you do, and when I look at my staff, I don't look at those people as if they are my workers. I look at um, uh, them as talented people whose talent I'm hiring for a certain period of time during the day, so I give them a lot of respect, number one. So I treat everybody with respect, whether it's a driver or a peon or a T-man or chief architect or a landscape, I treat everybody with respect. And, um, and I, uh, a lot of, lot of young people, I like to inspire them, so I, I bring them in the conference room, I kind of teach them, hey, look, this is how you have to do. So I think, um, and, and when you have a person on the top who is passionate about what they do, and also knows everything that you know, so there's a lot of um, uh, people start following you. Uh, if you are just a, a namesake architect, if you, are, if you don't know how to design, there's a lot of people like that in my profession who are uh, just namesake. They just happen to be at the right place at the right time, and they, are, uh, they don't have a lot of following. So in my case, I've been fortunate. 
I started as an artist, then went into architecture, so I can, I can work, I can sketch, I can draw, I can design, I can communicate. So people look up to me, and, uh, and that's how we put them all together. So the journey from Kashmir to California, was that instrumental in your growth that you had a global vision, you work in multi countries, uh, different language speaking countries, different languages of people, did that help and what would have been uh, with Tony Ashai today if you would have been in the same country? So from Kashmir I went to Punjab and everybody told, Chandigarh. Chandigarh, everybody told me they be careful with Punjabis, they're really mean people and bad people and everything else. <laughs> so uh, you know they're loud and you know so I went, I was really scared, and, and I had no clue about Punjabis. I, first, first time I found out that you don't eat rice for lunch or dinner, you know, because in Kashmir we eat rice for lunch and dinner, and, and they served me uh, some vegetables, and they served roti. I said, no, I don't want roti. I'm waiting for rice, and rice didn't come, so I didn't sleep, I couldn't eat, you know. So it was very difficult adjusting, but then soon I realized Punjabis are beautiful people. They are fun-loving, they enjoy life, they live life. So I realized that everything my parents and everybody else taught me was completely wrong. Punjabis are good people, I enjoy their company. Then I went to America, Punjabis told me, be careful with Americans. <laughs> 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 yeah, they are mean people, they don't, you know, they don't have family values, and, and they are like, you know, women sleep around with men, and all this other stuff, you know. So I said, okay, so go to America. And I realized that Punjabis were wrong because Americans have values. <laughs> and, uh, and then from America, I went to Arab. And Americans tell me, Arabs, you know, stupid people, this, that, whatever. You know, they had these notions about Arab people. They're not intelligent. They wear flip-flops and walk around in their big white overall. And, and then I reached Arab and I realized that people are really intelligent and they're sharp. Businessmen, they negotiate and they, are, they have same family values. So the journey from Kashmir, so I think if I was born in California and raised in California, I would be a completely different person. I think growing up in Kashmir and going through this whole thing, I realized that the people are same everywhere. And it's funny that we have a fear of associating with another person or another culture. And in the end, there is really no fear. I have two beautiful children right now, and I tell them, I said, whoever you want to marry, just make sure that uh, that's a decent person. That's all I care about. How do you adapt to the legal aspects of working in different countries? In terms of, uh, from the financial side, from the permission side, how do you adapt to those challenges? How do you overcome that, and what is your turnaround time in overcoming? Like tomorrow you go to a new country, which has some specific rules for architecture, for development. You have that different rules for transferring money in and out. How do you manage those aspects? Do they trouble you or you will leave it to the professionals who do it on their own and they, they advise you how to do it? How do you do it? I, um, I mean, I just tell everybody, I give directions. I don't really get involved in, in that kind of a thing. I have general manager that's handling Dubai office, for example. So I just tell them that make sure that you don't do anything illegal. Make sure we, don't, we follow the law. We have lawyers. The lawyers take care of that. And uh, give you an example, um, in Dubai, if you sign a post-dated check and that check bounces, <laughs> they put you in jail, <laughs> right? <laughs> so when I found out, so I said, first, our company policies, we never write a post-dated check because we don't want to go to jail in Dubai. So these are the things, you know, you, you learn and you have the right people. There is a lawyer who will give you advice on law. There's an accountant even though in those, every country there's different tax laws. And then we have accountants, CPAs in the U.S. that gives the advice on how if you make money over there, how do you transfer, all that stuff. So try to follow the law. Don't you consider yourself lucky of being at the right place at the right time? You are sketching in a place and the guy standing next to you happens to be the dean of an architectural college and everything is, it's so picture perfect. It's like script of a movie. So you, you, don't you think you are being lucky of being always at the right time? At the right place? Uh, actually, I always say that's the story of my life, <laughs> to be at the right place at the right time. Um, I don't know how it happens. Uh, like they say, God's watching over you. I have so much faith that if I walk on this stage and I'm supposed to fall down, somebody will put something underneath and I won't fall down. This is the faith I have. So I, I, treat, I have friends who are the kings, 
and I have friends who are drivers. You know, I treat them all same. Um, to be yeah. at the do the kings know that? Uh, kings know that. <laughs> and as a, as a as a matter of fact, like uh, a friend of mine, he is uh, uh, he's a king of a, a small country, and I know he, that country. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and uh, first time I met him. So he took me to his office and he says, you're pretty straightforward. I'm like, yeah. He's like, uh, so what do you think is wrong with my system? I said, your system sucks. It's the, most, it's the worst system I've ever seen. So he's like, really, what should we do? So we started talking and all of a sudden he became my friend. He says, you're the first person who come, uh, come and told me on my face because everybody out here, they don't say what I want to hear. So I treat everybody the same, so it doesn't really matter, and that's how it goes. How do you manage a customer relationship? Because their expectations are too high. They go pretty wild also, because I know the rich and the wealthy people have got very less patience. I also know people who are wealthy but not powerful, like in the king country, there are wealthy people, but they are not powerful, because only one man is powerful, that is the king. <laughs> okay, I get it. <laughs> so how do you manage the temperament of your clients? Because they can be very demanding at times. And how do you protect yourself from making sure that the relationship doesn't go sour? Well, um, I think uh, I would just uh, not offend them. That's number one. You know, uh, if, if you get offended by people who come in jeans to meet with you, I will not wear jeans. So that will be number one. I will wear a suit if that's what you prefer. So I will not offend you, and, uh, but then I would not also go out of my way to please you. I don't do that. I, I feel that I'm an artist, and uh, you've hired me to create something for you, basically take your ideas and interpret them, and I will do my job. And if there is a personality conflict, I will tell you that we should part ways and we should not. So I'm not really your... Um, uh, your, uh, you know, I don't go out of my way. Uh, and I have yet to see a client who fired me because of that. And most of the time, I think, most of them people see honesty in your eyes. And um, they come around and they tell you, yeah, this is, uh, you are right. So sometimes I think people, when they kiss up to their clients, and I think it, it, uh, it works against you many times, and, uh, and you end up losing the client. When you tell them the truth uh, that it's not going to happen, um, if they come up with, a, I want to build this building at 250 uh, dirhams per square foot, and I look at the building, I say, it's never going to happen. They don't want to hear it, but I tell them, okay, go somewhere who will build it for you for 250 dirhams, and then come and talk to me. So I gotten phone calls after a year and saying that you were right, I should have listened to you and things like that. So, you know, I work on a long-term basis, not on a short-term basis. What is your learning edge? As professionals, as entrepreneurs, we need to keep on learning. This is also one of our sessions where we learn from experienced people like you. What's your learning edge? Where do you learn from? Is it something systematic and strategic, well-planned, or it ha happens randomly? What's your learning edge? How do you learn? Google. <laughs> <laughs> Google and YouTube. <laughs> when okay. I'm sitting doing nothing, I, uh, yeah, no, of course, I learn um, through travel. I learn through interacting with people. I learned a lot interacting with you in last one hour, sitting in the car in the traffic. Um, so you learn, uh, as long as your mind is open, you'll constantly learn. You know, people, worst thing that can happen to a human being is when they're prejudiced. This is the worst thing that can happen to you. I think if you want to give somebody a curse, tell them that I hope and I wish that you become prejudiced. That is the worst thing. That's like cutting his legs off. You know? So when you're not prejudiced, you're open to everything. I'm not prejudiced. Yes, I'm Kashmiri, but I'm not prejudiced against who is not Kashmiri. I'm not, you know, <laughs> which is very unlike Kashmiris, by the way. Kashmiris are very prejudiced people. So, uh, so, and I think you should be able to critique yourself, uh, you know, and you should be able to take positive cr critique from people. And if somebody says, hey, you know what, you got a problem, and uh, you should take him out for lunch and say, explain to me what my problem is. I want to understand. So that's how you learn. I think uh, if you shut them off, say, I don't like you, then you'll never learn. So I, a lot of times, I, and listening, to people, you know, uh, I have friends who are like very powerful people, and I found out a lot of times they sit and listen. Uh, they may not like what they're hearing, but they listen. 
so listening to people, interacting with people, um, understanding uh, different cultures, it's a learning process. Uh, travel is a big, uh, a big learning thing. Travel is a big learning thing. And unless I am running for elections in India, I'll give you an idea, I am not going to critique your system here. If you tell me that, look, Tony, if you're going to do business here, this is the way it's done, I'm going to say, okay, let's do it that way. I'm not going to sit here and give you a lecture on morality, that you shouldn't do it this way, uh, uh, because this is your country, it's not my country. I, I didn't, you know, I chose chosen a different country. So, uh, so I'm not, so this, those are the things, you know, when you leave your mind open, you will constantly find yourself learning new things. If you might close your mind, you will never learn anything.